Hi friends, this is paper number EL4501, lecture taken by Dr. M. R. Gadvi. Uh, I do remember the isolation technique, especially there is a two part of isolation technique. One is a PN junction and second one is a dielectric isolation. <coughs> Uh, but before directly jumping to the metallization, let me take the dielectric isolation, p-n junction uh, isolation that means by having a diffusion of either p-type material or the n-type material you are taking the isolation that is uh, well said uh, even in the later part of the lecture I will take it again. Dielectric isolations is basically taken care in the case of uh, using a material either silicon dioxide or by the ruby and that would be uh, the which is shown over here by the red line ok. So, naturally to have such kind of the uh, separation between the p substrate and the epitaxial layer there should be a one sufficiently thick isolating line uh, or layer will be developed either with the silicon dioxide the SiO2 or it would be the ruby and which is uh, very much uh, uh, helpful especially in the case of a high frequency uh, respond of a transistor where the parasitic uh, capacitance developed between the epitaxial layer and the p substrate it happens because on an average ic is going to be mounted uh, on the header of the ic on the uh, using the p substrates so p substrate is on an average as a ground so that is a negative with compared compared to the epitaxial layer and therefore the reverse bias has taken place. So there will be a very little capacitance will be there but that is a unknown unexpected parasitic capacitance by having the sufficient uh, thicker material layer this parasitic capacitance value can be uh, neglected or it would be reduced uh, effectively which is improve the performance of your uh, transistor. So, that is the advantage by having the dielectric isolation. Metallization. The metallization is needed an important part of the IC fabrication. Uh, eventually, the all the processes get finished and your IC will be in the almost in the shaped to get packaging and the assembling. Uh, uh, just the second last process is the metallization where the aluminum vapor is going to be vapored on the uh, IC or the wafer on the desired position where exactly the uh, a bonding pad is going to be fabricated which is used to solder some uh, very thin uh, connecting line in between the lead of your IC to the desired points of the component and therefore uh, it would be carried out the bonding pad uh, vaporization by the aluminum uh, and aluminum is used because of two reason one scientific reason is that it has a very good mechanical bond with the silicon so some uh, books are referring that it is has a uh, silver is also a good uh, addition but yes uh, with a long lasting uh, addition bond as well as the economic concept the aluminum is preferable material. Uh, it will provide you a low resistance non rectifying ohmic contact and that would be the helping for the any kind of the uh, component uh, connections. This is carried out uh, in the vacuum process. Vacuum process is about to be a one atmosphere or you can say that 760 millimeter mercury bar. So, or on and over above it will be a 10 to the power 20 uh, 10 to the power minus 6 to minus 7 torr. So, this is roughly about one atmospheric pressure and this is carried out under the uh, bell jar uh, type of the furnace where the chip or the wafers are going to be mounted on top portion of the jar uh, 
uh, furnace and the evaporating uh, material on the neighborhood the red one is the evaporating source material so it would be aluminum it is evaporated so the vapor will be smoothly reach to this one and that is why it making a vacuum agar question mein ye pooch le ki vacuum kyu zaruri hai because the source of your uh, uh, metal vapor uh, it could be silver could be aluminum can easily reach and uniformly reach to the ic chip or the wafer and that's why it is needed the vacuum level someone asked in the question that it would be one atmospheric pressure or 760 mm mercury bar or you can say it's a one tor or oh, sorry 10 to the power minus 6 to minus 7 tor okay so the next point is once it get a metallization point uh, bonding pad develop then you have to finally connect the bonding pad to the terminal lead but before that you have to separate each and every ic from the wafer and that process is known as the scribing and cleaving scribing and the cleaving so scribing that means uh, Uh, to make a stronger groove on the wafer and cleaving that means from that uh, groove you are going to break each and every die or each and every chip of the wafers there is a drastic uh, loss over here occurred on an average statistic says that some around 25 to 30 percent losses are developed over here once you are finding out the die at a separate uh, piece you can measure a test run on this one that means with a bonding pad you can measure the voltage outcome as per the desire if the voltage is at the level of 97 to 98% up to your desire then it is marked as a good ic otherwise it is marked as a bad ic and it will be were uh, thrown to the dustbin okay and thereafter once you mark a good ic is then you can choose the suitable package for the packaging of the ic on an average a very well known three package are there one is a dual in line like 741 or old gate ic or the uh, many other ic's power ic's you have see, uh, seen uh, ceramic flat ic is well known for the power ic's metal can type of ic you may have used the cap is of a metal and the many terminals are there looks like a transistor but with the so many number of the terminals ceramic is generally used for the good heat dissipating uh, agent so naturally you should and withstand as well uh, you may having a range of a can i see some around 8 to 10 10 to 12 a uh, uh, number of package and then dual in line is some around 8 14 16 leads but 24 Uh, 36 and 42 leads are also available especially in the special circuits also ceramic package are uh, very flat one and it withstand with the good hermetically sealed also okay so once uh, entire uh, process is there so let us brief very fastly the very first preparation that is a wafer preparation so the big uh, uh, i got you have of a silicon and this from this ingot you can cut it out into slices then get mirror polish and uh, you having a slide and this slide is going to be uh, referred as a wafer and once you have a wafer you can uh, introduce as a uh, epitaxial layer which is having a range of a sum around 5 to 25 this is the thickness of the epitaxial layer or a silicon dioxide or any uh, diffused layer in your fabrication that's depend on a three parameter how long you are going to expose under the uh, process what is the temperature at a time of your exposure of your furnace as well as the material and uh, what is the concentration of the material what you are going to be used to exploit it and fourth parameter is uh, there but you have to uh, consider and that is a pressure and sometime you can play around with the pressure and concentration you can 
manipulate very nicely. If you have a less concentration of a molecule and you can increase a little bit pressure, the concentration will automatically increase and that is how you can play around. But in nutshell, you have to optimize these four parameters pressure, temperature, concentration and the exposure time. This will determine the thickness of the layers except the wafer layer because it is you are going to cut it into the slice. But after the wafer preparation whatever the steps are there, their layers are depends on these four parameters. Uh, then you have to let us say you have a four component you want to design then you require a four island and this island will be separated by the P plus concentrated uh, channel and this uh, if you take it the bird view or the overview then it looks like this where P plus channel is here and all n channels are n islands are separated by P plus uh, layers and this is happening and uh, carried out because of to separate two island and protect there to electrically insulated and electrically insulated can be achieved by introducing a P plus channel because the there is a reverse bias in between the uh, epitaxial layer and the P plus and reverse bias that means it is a thicker one uh, depletion layer and therefore leaking of the chances of electrons will be negligible. So, this is a, a oxidation and the isolation techniques and uh, this is I think we had discussed I think ok. So, so the next one is just a minute it is a oxidation process and oxidation process is on an average 2 micron to 2 I mean maximum to 2 micron then isolation can be having a two type of varieties we having a pn junction uh, isolation and an, another is the dielectric isolation so naturally there is always few process have to be removed uh, I mean uh, SiO2 layer to be removed thereafter you have to have a photolithography and then you have to uh, select the diff uh, impurity material and then you have to diffuse them and again you have to ha have a another layer and this whole processes you have to continuously repeat and that would be create the uh, isolation uh, within the two islands. The concentration uh, for the acceptor material or the, or the donor material will be decided uh, on an average the acceptor atoms having the concentrations is uh, 5 into 10 to the power 20 per centimeter cube or cubic centimeter whereas the p type substrates is very very lightly dropped and you can see that their concentration is on the order of 10 to the power 15. So, if, if you look at that, so it is roughly 3 times uh, 3 into 10 to the power 5 times lesser concentrated compared to the any uh, concentrated. So, like a P plus channel then their concentration would be 5 to the 10 to the power 20. If it is a P substrate there its concentration is 1.4 10 to the power 15 almost 3 into 10 to the power 5 times lesser. So, this is how you can analyze the next one is the so this is a P plus and this is a no P substrates you have a four islands that means for each and every component will be developed on a different island and then it is a emitter diffusion so emitter diffusions required a rich concentration and therefore you have some around 2 to the power. Uh, 10 to the power 20. So, if you look at here uh, it is something like 2 to the power 20 per centimeter cube. So, uh, that would be the range of uh, N plus. So, or the concentrated N region. 
uh, we have seen previously that uh, substrate will be 1.4 10 to the power 15 uh, we have seen the let me take it back so you can have an idea and the acceptor having a sum around 5 into 10 to the power 20 so this is your concentration of your any n type material that would be some around order of 2 to the power 20 and this is how the high degree of damage of the silicon lattice at the surface thus effectively making the semi metallic so n plus layer is making a good ohmic contact and therefore it is also uh, needed to develop the n plus channel so bonding pad will be mounted on this n plus channel are you getting me so n plus channel is basically for the ohmic contact or the uh, bonding pad pre -requ required stage ok so <clears throat> it looks like uh, the aerial view of this I see it looks like this and uh, aluminum metallization uh, the second last topic as we had discussed the aerial view will be so red strips is nothing but the vaporized aluminum material so internally connected and uh, this is how it works so I stop here so this is aluminum vaporization can be visualized very nicely thank you so much stay home stay 